Hi, Andrew, you okay? I'm good, though, thank you. Um, can I just get the team news? Obviously, the big news probably Destiny's serious injury. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, from sort of the last game. Uh, yeah, disappointing one for, for Destiny, for, for ourselves as well, because uh, it's been a big part of our year. And um, yeah, just an unfortunate sort of incident of training. And, um, you know, he's had the operation, it's gone well. So, um, but, you know, um, Hopefully gives him time, sort of pre-season to get back into it. So we'll miss him. Uh, Skippy picked up a small knock as well at training, so he'll miss this weekend. So they're kind of the, the outs apart from the long-term ones. And um, uh, Pedro and Richie both trained all week, so uh, both available. It's obviously been a long break since that Newcastle defeat. I'm sure you probably wanted a match straight away, and Arsenal have had four games since. But has there been any positives, maybe that... The, the longer term injuries, the Van der Vens, the Madisons, maybe just to have maybe a couple of weeks. Has there been any positives from that? Or did you just want a game straight after that Newcastle match? Oh, look, yeah, I mean, you prefer games, absolutely, especially this time of the year. Um, it's it's kind of unusual to sort of have, you know, two weeks of um, no games at all, particularly when, you know, there's a fair bit of football happening and, um, you know, you're not involved. So we've tried to use that time as well as possible. You know, we've, we've trained... Uh, <coughs> You know, I've trained hard. The, the players, to be fair, them have, have embraced that and uh, and trained. But yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to having a game. That's for sure. And they've always said like fourth this doesn't matter whether it's fifth Champions League. It's about progression in, in the next season, everything like that. But North London derby, such a brilliant match. But then it's Chelsea on the Thursday. Then it's Liverpool. Three huge, huge matches. Will you know more maybe about the squad you've got at the moment and and where maybe you are as as a team at the moment after those three massive games? Look, every every time you, you you're out there is a chance to measure yourself uh, for sure. I mean, I, you know, I've got a fair idea of where we're at, and you know, you know, sort of what progress we've made, what progress we need to make. Um, but it's just a great another great challenge for us. Um, as you said, there's um, three big games, and then we finish the season with three games. So, um, and they're all games of you know consequence uh, for us for the opposition. So. I think the players are looking forward to that as well. You know, uh, this time of the year, usually you, you want to be playing for something, and um, <coughs> certainly the games we, we'll be involved in will have something in them. So, uh, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Such a special game this one. I know you had, had a taste of it at the Emirates on, on in September, and probably unlucky maybe not to have got the win in the second half. But there's a feeling among some Spurs fans that a priority is that whatever happens with Spurs this season, they don't want to see Arsenal win the league. Do you understand that? What's your take on that with some fans feeling that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's fair enough. Again, I'm not going to uh, dictate how fans uh, feel or what they feel is important. Uh, we understand the importance of the game and, and we understand the importance of, you know, um, in, particularly at home in these kind of games to, to not let, you know, our, our biggest rival or, or, you know, in the biggest derby for us um, get, the top, get on top of us so we understand the consequences and that but yeah you know, ultimately it's still you know about us trying to measure ourselves against uh, the teams we want to be challenging on a more consistent basis and um, it's a great opportunity to do that on Sunday thanks bud if Hi, good afternoon. Good seeing you. Yes. Um, obviously, Newcastle United and Arsenal, they present a different challenge. Their league position is very different as well. Mm. But overall, what's the biggest improvement you want to see as a collective out of a very tough task at home this Sunday? Yeah, look, I, I mean, you know, I don't think one's a reference point, reference point for the other. I mean, you know, the Newcastle game it was really disappointing for us on a number of levels. You know, obviously the result was was, was poor, but the, the performance didn't <coughs> anywhere reach the levels we wanted to. But I think We've learned a hell of a lot of it out of that. Um, the players have learned a lot out of that. But irrespective of that, I think you know, it doesn't matter what you've done in the previous game. Um, you know, when you're playing in such a big game, a derby, um, particularly at this time of the year, where, where like I said, there's there's great meaning to to the points. I think uh, for both clubs, um, you know, what's happened previously, whether that's the immediate past or or further back uh, becomes irrelevant because you know it's going to be a tough game. Uh, you know it's it's going to have a bit of an, e of an edge to it. Um, it'll be a great atmosphere. Um, you just got to get ready to, to sort of make sure that you ma match those levels um, with the performance. Because of the timing, because of what it means to the fans, the rivalry. Does it feel for you personally as the biggest game for you as a Spurs manager um, since you joined the club? Um, 
look, I mean, I, I think every game's important, you know. I, I take every game seriously and, and every game's a big game and I think that's the one thing that, you know, we're trying to impress on this group of players is that that's the nature of the Premier League. It's relentless, you know, and if, you, if you're kind of not 100% focused on each different challenge, then you're going to come up short. So, you know, I always feel the next game's the biggest game. <coughs> But I understand the, the context around you know, a North London derby and what it means to our supporters, for sure. Question about Arsenal, please. As a project, obviously, um, it started well for Mikel. They won the FA Cup, but then they had difficult times. How impressive have you been with the way Mikel has been leading this project and also the support he's been receiving um, in transfers and also during challenging times? Yeah, I think I've said before, I think you know, it's no coincidence that the teams that kind of are up there consistently the last two or three years are, are teams that have had a clear plan on, on what they wanted to do and they've stuck by it, um, you know, and I think Arsenal's a great example of that, you know, I think, yeah, Mikel's done a, an outstanding job and I think it's been recognised by the club and they feel he's the man to to lead them forward and they've supported him um, ever since then and I think, um, I think there's, there's a blueprint there for sure for, for every club but it's not as simple as just saying we'll just, you know, stick to, 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 to the same process, every club's unique, every club's a little bit different in terms of how they rebuild. But, um, you yeah, know, it's a credit to, to Arsenal and like I said Mikel more, more than anybody that um, they've been really disciplined about building a side that they feel can bring sustained success. And, um, you know, they've been challenging now for the last two or three years to do that. Ali. Hi, and um, if you don't mind me asking, how did Destiny get the injury? Was it non-contact? Was it a collision? Or? No, it was non-contact. He just went to have a striker goal and sort of by himself and uh, he got the injury. Does that just kind of show how unfortunate you've been? I think it was it even Perisic, Manasota, they were both non-contact as well. Yeah, well, you know, I said, look, I've, I've been around long enough to know that sometimes these things happen in football and, you know, you, for all, you know, you try and sort of create, um, you know, the best possible environment for players, but even within that, um, there's always a possibility that these things will happen. So, look, uh, unfortunate for him because obviously he had the Euros as well and there's, you know, he, he, he had a really, a really, a promising season for us. He learnt a lot. He was progressing, and uh, but again, this is just part of a footballer's journey. You know, he's going to have to deal with this. Every footballer has some point has a setback. So, you know, if, if there's one silver lining, like I said, um, <clears throat> it did happen just before the off season, where it was, you know, he's not going to miss a chunk of the season. You know, hopefully everything goes well, and you know, he's, he's ready close to start of next season. Dejan Kulusevski has become a dad this week. How's he coping with the maybe sleepless nights and training and everything all suddenly? Yeah, um, um, you know it's um, yeah it's great for Decky. Um, I know he's, he's he's very happy about uh, being a dad, and it's um, yeah. I mean, it's a as I keep saying to those guys, it's a, it's a life changer. You you have somebody uh, you know within your uh, sort of um, you, family unit becomes more important than yourself, and sometimes for footballers that's a bit confronting. Um, but um, I'm sure Decky will handle it well, and uh, you know, and his and his partner, and um, yeah, bless them and their and their, and their child. Let's ask you about young Mikey Moore. He's been training with you guys on the first team for the last couple of weeks. How important is that experience for him to kind of learn from like of Sonny, James Madison, players like when he's just 16? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we've done that all year. We've, we've had you know, guys at different time from our academy and and sort of um, you know the under 21s training with us at, you know, for extended periods rather than sort of just bringing them up for a day or two. And um, and Mikey's been really good. He's uh, you know, look, he's He's a very talented boy and he's had, even for him, he's had a fairly disruptive season, to be fair to him. He's had a couple of injuries, but when he's performed, he's performed really well. The reports I've had on him uh, have always uh, been outstanding. And um, and it's been good to have him, like, you know, obviously we've had a couple of weeks without a game and um, it was just good to get him involved with the first team. And, and again, to be fair to him, he's adapted really well. He hasn't looked out of place. And, um, yeah, it's, it's great for him and hopefully gives encouragement to him and sort of, sort of the other guys uh, who, are coming, who are coming through. Charlie, uh, just confirm that you sort of mentioned in passing. So the expectations, destiny will miss the Euros as well yeah, yeah. with this injury. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, with this block of games you've got coming up, the three big ones, how much do you now, or generally as a manager, think of them as as a block, or is it just let's just think about Sunday and concern ourselves with Thursday when it comes? Yeah, no, I mean I think they're, they're six big ones you know, for us, and you know when you look at the, our opponents, like I said. They've all got something on them in terms of, um, you know, for the opposition as well. They're still playing for something. So, um, 
yeah, you, know, you, you understand that they're going to be six really you know, tough games are a great measure for us. But I think to kind of look beyond whatever your next challenge is, I so say that's the nature of the Premier League and it's, it's what we've been trying to, you know, I think, try and impress on the guys, particularly the guys who are kind of, it's either their first year in the Premier League or just sort of getting their career started, that, you know, every week is, is a challenge. There isn't a game where you can't be totally focused on just that opponent. And if you if you do have anything other than that focus, you'll, you'll pay a price. And I think we've done that a few times this year. We're, you know, we haven't been as focused uh, around certain games and, um, you know, we've, we've been found wanting short. So um, definitely six big games, but not looking past the one uh, on Sunday. Is it quite useful as well? Because obviously next season you'll be in that routine of big midweek game, big weekend game, and there hasn't been loads of that this season, but mm. obviously this will be a kind of test run for that. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, you, you don't sort of, it's not a, an exact replica, but like I said, it, it's it's for us a, a, a good chance to, to measure ourselves. And, um, you know, for me, as I said all along, it's about sort of understanding at the end of the season we've, with everything we've had to deal with, um, you know, how we've handled it, um, good, bad or otherwise, and what we've learned from it and, and hopefully, you know, create a foundation where, you know, next year we're better placed to... to to sort of be in a different position at the, at the end of the season. How much as well, obviously you need cool heads for a game like this, but also it will be emotional, the crowd will be really up for it. How much do you say to the players, you know, lean in, harness that atmosphere and how much is it about just focus on what you're doing? Yeah, I think you have to. Um, I think you have to anyway when you're at a big club or particularly if, you, if, you, you know, if, if your ambition is to try and, um, you know, be challenging for honours is you've got to be prepared to embrace the big games, the big occasions, and, and like I said, lean into them. And, and that's that's the reality of it. You can't sort of ignore it or try and sort of you know, put it in, 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 in a space where it's not going to affect you because it will if, if you don't embrace it. So, um, you know, we want to be a club that hopefully is challenging for honours year in, year out. That means you're going to be involved in big games, whether that's derbies or otherwise. Um, big games of consequence and um, you know again the sort of my advice always in these kind of situations is to embrace it. Mm. David. Hey Ange, hey, um, from your dozens of years of managerial experience what have those experiences taught you you know in terms of being there um, with something to play for at the end of the season what is the key with you know a month or so to go with a handful of games to go? Yeah, as I said it's just, it's just about making sure you, you're kind of you know, clearly embrace the the challenge and 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 try and tackle it in 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 the way that we've kind of got us into this position in the first place. So uh, you know whether that's um, you know from our perspective, you know we've we've kind of had some inconsistencies and some challenges this year. But when we've we've played well, we've played a certain way, and we've gone about things in a certain way. And, and there's no point now, you know, when you get to the sort of most important part of the year that you, you shy away from that or you, you change your approach. you just got to uh, sort of double down on it and, and, and sort of really be focused on just playing our football. And, and like I said, that's that's a great measure for us because otherwise you, you'll never know whether you, um, you know, where, where potentially you're short or, or whether you can be successful um, doing it our way. Your former club, Yokohama F Marinos, just qualified for the Asian Champions League final with another former protege, um, Harry Kill, just, I guess, a line... Um, on that, yeah, no, it's great, great for H and um, great for the club. Um, you know, I think they've uh, they've been in one other Champions League final, but they've they haven't been one for for quite a while. So um, yeah, delighted for everyone there, the players, the, the staff. A lot of them are still there from when I was there, and I said delighted for Harry. I'm sure he's he's loving the experience um, working in Japan with that group of players and um, Asian Champions League final is a big game, and um, yeah, I hope uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope they do well. And finish with George, please. Angelo, so I just wondered, the first 10 games of the season, you had such a strong start, and then the last few weeks, it's just gone a little bit inconsistent. I just wondered, is just that a consequence of problems in January, injuries? Is there any reason for that to you? Oh, there's, there's a lot of reasons for it. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's just part of where we are as a, as a team at the moment and as a, as a group. Um, I'd be very surprised if anyone expected us to have 38 games unblemished in our first year of building a team. So um, I expected us to be consistent. They may have come at the start of the year, you just don't know. But we obviously, like you said, got off to a great start um, the first 10 games. And, you know, it's, it's quite simple to see what happened after that. You know, we had some 
fairly significant injuries to key players and um, you know we we kind of battled our way through for for a lot of that period and still stayed competitive and uh, yeah you know the last sort of probably couple of months we've been inconsistent where we've been really good or, or you know been off it um, so but again I think that's just part of the process of where we're at as a, as a group and as a team and uh, you know uh, having said that the players are still you know very very competitive and in, in every game and and you know, we wouldn't be in the position we were if uh, we are if, uh, if it wasn't the case. Um, Huming Song doesn't have Harry Kane's record of scoring against Arsenal, but he always has a knack of... He's a sort of big game player. And I just wondered if you could just sum up what he's been like for you and how important he is for you as your captain in these big matches. Yeah, look, um, yeah, vital because, as you said, he's he's got the experience, um, you know, for... It'll be at least two or three of our guys. It'll also be their first sort of experience of a home uh, North London derby. So you know, you always lean on the guys who kind of have been there, done that, and not, not only that, but excelled in it. And Sonny's definitely that. He's he's definitely been a big game player for this football club for a long time. And I think he's looking forward to it. Obviously, with the added responsibility this time of being the captain. And um, look, he's he's been outstanding for us all year. And uh, I know he's looking forward to the game. I think. To be fair, the whole playing group's looking forward to the game. They're looking forward to any game at the moment because we've, we've just been training for two weeks. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it goes on Sunday. And just a word on where you are. If, if I'd said to you at the beginning of the season that you would lose Harry Kane, but with six games to go, you'd, you'd be fifth in the Premier League table, you would have taken that, wouldn't you? No. No, I'd be disappointed, mate. You think it should be higher? No. You said to me what I would have taken at the start of the year. You didn't ask me whether I'd think we should be higher I don't start any year thinking we're going to finish fifth so what I'm saying is at the start of the year I wouldn't have settled for fifth I would have tried to to win it all where we are I think is is a fair reflection of our season I think we've been we've been pretty good uh, but we have been inconsistent we've had some challenges um, with you know injuries and and, and suspension at, at different times which are all indicative I think of a group that's still learning about how to be you know, a real strong competitor in this league. But I don't think anyone would say that we're in a false position. I think we've earned where we are, um, both from a good and, and sort of not good perspective.